Last month I reviewed a Rasp Touch Raspberry Pi based player with touchscreen. It was running Pi Core Player to emulate a Squeezebox Touch. I recently came across a room bridge software for the Pi that can use the touchscreen to display what's playing and even offer play, pause and skip from the screen. A proper working room bridge image for the Pi can be obtained from Hi-Fi Berry and it will only work with Hi-Fi Berry and compatible products. RuneLabs offers RuneBridge software for the Linux on a ARM7 processor, but then you have to install it all yourself. The fun of Ropia is that it installs and configures itself. It even supports the Raspberry Pi 7 inch color touchscreen. I used nice Rust Touch hardware, but you could use any housing that can hold the Raspberry Pi and the Raspberry Pi 7 inch touchscreen. Once that is set up, you need to prepare a micro SD card with the ROPA image. This can be downloaded from the ROPA.org site. The link is in the show notes. Just follow the instructions on the Getting Started page to load the image on the micro SD card. Then the micro SD card is inserted in the Raspberry Pi. In the case of the Rasp Touch, the micro SD slot on the rear is used. The software is written so that it analyzes the hardware and automatically adjusts to it. The site warns you to be patient. I would urge you to be very patient for it does take a long time. If you have the screen connected, you more than once are invited to log in. Don't wait until the player screen becomes visible. Now open an internet browser on your computer or tablet and type ropia.local. The web interface of the ropia becomes visible. Here you can set the host name, which is only handy if you intend to use more than one ropia player in your network. Below that you select what sound card you want to use, if you want to use one. You could instead tick the audio USB box and use a USB DAC. Leave the rest on the page as it is and click Commit Changes, followed by Save Changes and Reboot. Confirm you want to reboot and wait for it to start. You might have to refresh the screen after the reboot. If you don't use a screen, you're set. If you do use a screen, go to the Display tab where you can change the orientation of the screen if it's upside down. Below that, give the Ropia player a name. I use Rasp Touch, but any name will do. Now go to the root interface on your computer, open Settings and select Extensions. Under Discovered Rune Extensions you will see Ropia mentioned. Click on Enable and the display on the Raspberry Pi will show what's playing from now on. If you want, you can set further preferences for the network and automatic update. For once you have installed Ropia, you need not be concerned about updates. If you're adventurous, you can set up the update engine to go for the beta versions. Currently, two user interface screens are available. One standard screen and a screen that lets you also select the radio, random and repeat functions. Simply tap on the cover art to switch between the two. The play, pause and skip forward and backward functions speak for themselves. And no, you cannot browse through your music and or select music. Touching the lower right corner lets you set the screen brightness, the time format, scrolling text and blank screen on timeout. The sound quality will be determined by the hardware used. Use the USB output and the quality will be limited. Use a good quality headboard and the sound improves. I hear no difference between Volumio, PyCore Player and Ropia on the same Rasp Touch hardware. As said, you are free to choose any housing, if any, and use it with or without screen. You could also order the Rasp Touch housing I used, install no headboard DAC or SPDIF output and use it purely as a display and simple remote by activating the Spockfish extension. I use the Rasp Touch parallel to the SOTM SMS 
200 Ultra network audio interface so I could enjoy the very high quality of the SOTM and the display of the ROPA software. But in my set 3 the Audiophonics ES9028 internal DAC does a great job. Headboards by Allo, Hi-Fi Berry, IQ Audio, Just Boom and the standard i 2 s boards are supported, meaning that almost anything will play. The ES9028 worked fine with the standard i 2 s setting. DOP is supported as is native DSD streaming on a large number of DACs. See the audio hardware page on ropier.org for an up to date list. Almost finished with this review, I discovered that Ropier was initiated and developed by Harry ten Bergen, who is a viewer of this channel but also a fellow Dutchman, IT specialist and hi-fi enthusiast. I contacted him and he told me he wanted the installation of the Ropier to be easy for people with limited or no knowledge of computers and software and only Rune will be supported. I asked him for future plans. Wi-Fi will be implemented although he doesn't advise using it and I agree. More screens might be added, more advanced zone selections and perhaps infrared control. But actually that is only window dressing. Ropier indeed is very easy to install, even for the IT challenged. Only the impatient might disturb the lengthy automated installation and confi configuration process. Harry might consider adding an indicator that work still is done and the login message is to be ignored. But now that you know, it won't bother you. If significant improvements are impl implemented, I'll let you know. So subscribe to this channel and follow me on Twitter, Facebook or Google+. See the show notes for the links. If you have a question, post it below this video, but please don't ask me for buying advice. See my About Questions video to find out why. If you like this video, please consider supporting the channel through Patreon and see super exclusive videos too. Just one dollar a month will do. The link is in the show notes. And don't forget to tell your friends on the web about this channel. I am Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.